Uh, right, good morning, folks. Uh, massive thanks for coming along to our A6 graduation. Although I've been at this school for three years now, uh, this is the first opportunity I've had to, to lead one of these, so uh, it's great to do it with this year group. A uh, few wee things for today. There's going to be speeches starting with Mr. Paris. Uh, we're then going to invite our house captain, uh, school captains rather, to do a speech. I will do a speech and then issue the certificates. Um, and then you guys are going to have some fun around some rounders and barbecue. Or, but just watch this man, because uh, he doesn't like to play by the rules when it comes to rounders, so watch the boss man. Uh, so I'll just welcome Mr. Paris up onto stage just to, to say a few words. Good morning everybody and a massive thank you for, for making it along this morning. It's lovely to see uh, the class of 2021-22 back in the building. Yeah, I think some of the best that some of them have ever looked, to be quite honest with you, in terms of uniform. I don't know what that tells us. Uh, but we're absolutely de delighted to be able to welcome parents, carers and family back into the school building for the first time in a long time that we've been able to have, to been able to have you here. Um, for the purposes of today, some people were unable to make it. We are trialling um, video live streaming. Um, there's multiple cameras on me just now, which I'm slightly concerned about. I know what you're thinking, the camera adds weight, but I think there's about four or five cameras which is probably doing me absolutely no good either. The further away and the higher up, the better it'll be. Um, thank you very much. So the, the recording of today will be available on uh, YouTube, as is everything in the 21st century. I think that we will group call that out. But if you are joining us from work, um, or you are joining us from home, a very warm, warm virtual welcome. It's actually similar to my situation today because I'm currently getting a live stream of a primary two sports day uh, on my phone as I go this morning as my seven-year-old uh, declares himself the champion of the hurdles in, uh, in, in primary two. So I see there are a few nervous faces um, in front of us this morning. Don't, don't worry too much, Stephen. We'll save all the dust for the prom. Um, rest assured today will be about celebrating your success, celebrating you guys individually and celebrating you collectively. For those of you that don't know me particularly well, um, I am not prone to huge bouts of emotion, um, other than getting a bit irritated sometimes. Um, but this morning there are a real range of emotions, um, and I say this genuinely, the first one is an absolutely immense pride um, in each and every one of you. Um, this has been a hugely positive, enthusiastic, innovative group to work with. And, and you are a group that um, will live long in the memory of this school. I'm going to take you through some of that this morning. One of the greatest privileges of being a teacher is having the opportunity to watch young people grow and develop over time. And though some of us were not here when this motley crew arrived um, from primary school, certainly over the last few years, they have grown immeasurably. And what they have managed to cope with uh, and achieve, given the circumstances of the last few years, is absolutely remarkable, to be quite honest with you. Yeah, thank you. Often the growth of an individual um, is measured through the lens of exam results or some other statistical measure that Scottish Government or West Lothian Council will ask um, of a school. But I think we would all accept, particularly as parents, carers and family, that education is a far more meaningful and a deeper experience than that. I will talk about this group individually and collectively about their successes in a minute. Um, about their immense success on an academic level. But on a human level and on a personal level, uh, huge credit to you guys as parents and carers because they are turning out to be just a fine group of human beings, a fine group of young people that I have absolutely no doubt will go on to be hugely successful. I mentioned a minute ago that Education should not necessarily just be seen through the lens of statistics. There is a story behind every single statistic. But one statistic or one group of statistics that I do think should be celebrated and highlighted is um, this, by a distance, 
and on almost the full range of measures that are available to us, is the most successful yearbook to have ever gone through Arnaville Academy. Now, they have heard me say that to them before. And the cynical amongst them would say, ah, but that was COVID and things were a wee bit different. I actually think that we need to view that as even more of a success because of what they managed to overcome through remote learning, hybrid learning, a little bit in, a little bit out, all the challenges that came with that academically, socially, access to your teachers, relationships at home, and planning what in essence is the largest transition you will ever go through in life. And you have still managed to achieve enormous success on an individual level. And as a collective, we are hugely, hugely proud of that. I also want to say a massive thank you to this group about their contribution to the school. Because I challenged, I don't know if they remember this, we were in this hall about a year ago doing sit induction, and one of the things I did was I challenged, Mr McKay was there as well, challenged them to, to really redevelop and recreate what, how six years work at Armadale Academy, how they liaise with staff, the contribution they make to their school, the role models that you have become, and on many, many different levels, I think again we can class that as a huge, huge success. Suppose the other uh, overriding emotion that I certainly have this morning, and I know that Mr McKay and I shared the lift in this morning, um, mostly to leave you out tonight, by the way. Just to be clear. Um, it, it, it's one of sadness. Actually, we're actually genuinely going to miss you. Um, it's been lovely to see you all this morning, but we will miss this group immensely. The relationships you have built up with us as a senior team, but the relationships more broadly across the school have been excellent. And we have been heavily, heavily reliant on your leadership skills. And you have made a significant contribution to the school. You've shaped the school in ways that I, I won't be able to cover this morning. But I listed off a few things this morning. The new school captains programme. Quite a controversial thing to move away from the traditional head boy, head girl system. But for lots of different reasons, the right thing to do. You guys have shaped that. The new student voice, student parliament approach. You guys have helped shape that. You have redefined what support in classrooms looks like for S1 and S2 students. Because there's an expertise that sits across you guys that can be passed on and can be utilised and was utilised very successfully when we were allowed to be out with the bubbles and transferring year groups and all that stuff that we were doing as part of COVID. You've helped relaunch the reading, the pair reading programme. You have been involved in delivering leadership opportunities to our primary school students. And I suppose most controversially and most importantly for the sixth year, you've redefined how to work the common room, which uh, tends to be the biggest priority and the next wrestle that we're going to have with the new six year is going to be based on the model that you guys set up for us. One of the things that I think, and I am biased, I'm a head teacher of the school, I've got a right ownership and I've got a real affection for the school, but I do genuinely believe that one of the, one of the things that we can take a great deal of pride on in the school is the sense of community. Now I actually find Armadale, Black Ridge and the West of Arcade a lovely community to work in. It's got its challenges, don't get me wrong, but it is actually a real sense of community that you don't often get working in, for example, one of the big cities. <coughs> that real sense of purpose, that real sense of community is something that we absolutely thrive on here. And the sense of community within the school is founded on those positive relationships. And one of the things I would like to say is that those relationships from your parents, from your carers, from your family have been hugely important to you in terms of getting you to the stage that you are at right now, which is ready for the big bad world. But I have to say it's been hugely important for us and our journey as a school. So, I mean, I would say with confidence that the hardest job in the world is being a parent or a carer. And I'm just going to pause there a little second. Agreed? Yes. <laughs> you know, I think I've got a really, really, really complex, multifaceted, fast-paced job in the job I do here. 
And I think of the day I think sometimes I go home and think I am absolutely terrible at this other bit. Because I have to say, you know, when you're um, when I'm sitting in meetings with parents often, I, I, I promise myself when it's a really difficult meeting, I'm not going to be that parent on the other side of the, you know, when I go to my children's school, well, there's a different beast comes out, folks, when it's your own children, um, I, as I think you would recognise. So I think it would only be fair and reasonable that you guys took the opportunity, six years they've supported you, can you just take the opportunity to say a massive thank you to your parents, your carers, your grandparents, your aunties and uncles, to I think they were all panicking that we're going to come up and say thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully not. So, transitions. You are about to enter an exit. You're about to transition formal statutory education. 15 years most of you will have been in the system from the age of 3 at nursery right the way through to, to 18 broadly in the secondary school. And Regardless of where you are going next, whether that is employment, whether that is higher education, further education, a training placement, an apprenticeship, a volunteering experience, we very much hope that you will look back at your time at Armadale Academy as one full of opportunities, full of challenges, with warm, caring, nurturing relationships that will have hopefully have prepared you for that next step in life. And it will be bumpy. Life is, life is a bit of a roller coaster. All right, there are ups and there are downs, and it will require a great deal of resilience. It will take a great deal of independence. But one thing I want you to know is you're not on your own. Okay? You can come back and ask us for help at any point in the future. I know you have very strong support networks that sit around your home. But we as an institution will always be here at the top of the hill. And for many of those strong relationships, we'll still be here. Come and see us. If you see us in the pub, well, you see him in the pub. <laughs> if you see us out and about, please come and say hello. You might need to remind us, because you do change a lot. Although with some of the, uh, there's a few folk walked in today with some serious fake tan on. Or, or, uh, or had been on the sunbed, which was one of the accusations about somebody. Um, you do change a lot, but please come and introduce yourself, remind us. Engage with us because actually it's one of the things that I've found over the years. This job is really challenging, but it's incredibly rewarding when somebody comes up to you and says, Hey James, sir, it's nice to see you, and you can have a conversation about where you are in life just now. So we very much hope that with the experience and opportunities you've had, that it will stand you in good stead in the future. I want to say to you, we really, really believe in each and every one of you. You have been on a, a, an incredible journey over the last six years. If you keep investing in yourself, like the way you've invested in yourself over the last few years, I am absolutely convinced that you will all go on to massive individual success. And I'm just going to finish off, this is a bit soppy, it's not really me, um, but success can be measured in lots and lots of different ways. And we've talked about exam results and some of you are going to university and college. <coughs> But actually, I'd like you to consider success through the lens of two very important things. The first is your happiness and the second is your well-being. Because it doesn't matter how successful you are in life, if you don't get those two things right, you will live an unfulfilled life. So I'm asking you, embrace the opportunities that are in front of you, grab them with two hands, turn nothing down, just try everything and, and bash your head like you live it to the full. But ultimately, I'm asking you to really, really consider those two very, very important facets. Your own happiness and putting yourself first. And your own well-being, spiritually, emotionally, physically, whatever that might be. Please, please look after yourselves, look after each other. You are, have been a fantastic year. Often six-year year groups can be disparate. I've actually turned most of the bells off for COVID, but there are still some bells that will ring, unfortunately. Please look after yourself and each other, I think is the point. As a collective, and there are friendship groups that are tighter than others across the year group, but there are often challenges in the six years with disparate friendship groups. Actually, as a group, 
you've been a lovely group to work with, you've been a hugely mutually supportive group of each other, and I would ask that you continue to, to do that. It has been an absolute privilege to work with you and be part of your journey, and we will remember you all fondly moving forward. So please stay in touch, if you need anything, you know where we are. Thank you for everything, and all the very best for the future. Right, here's the bit that I'm thinking a few individuals over in that back row and I'll need that in earnest about it. Over to you, school captains, no pressure Logan, please do the first one. And I'll invite the school captains up and give you their speech. It better be clean, it better be a road there, or there's no burgers at the end of the day. <laughs> Parents, teachers, fellow students, we are graduating. It's been a long six years and a short six years. Long because of the drama and the homework, the boring greetings and the early wake up calls, but short because of the amazing lifelong friendships, the lasting memories and interesting and amazing things we have learned. In the words of Mr. Paris himself, we started this journey building the legacy for our school when we were wee 12 year old riots. We went from milk and story time in primary school to the hair pulling fights in the courtyard through the phases of fidget spinners, bottle flippings and the mannequin challenge, as well as dabbing. I think it's safe to say we have come far. <laughs> However, not only have we gone through phases, we have also gone through teachers and students coming and going such as Ross Patterson, who we miss dearly. I've made that sound like he's dead, but uh, <laughs> he's just moved to Australia. Um, I can't forget uh, teachers such as Miss Dockery, who gave us the moment of Lewis proposing to her in English with a Haribo ring. <laughs> um, also, Mr McGuinness, who was the best cover teacher ever, and because nobody got anything done, and it was some of the funniest periods ever. On a serious note, we want to thank all the teachers that have put up with us throughout the journey of these six years. You had to deal with a lot between COVID and us, but you have made the hard times easier and well worth it. <laughs> Through the good and the bad, we've all made some amazing memories we'll never forget. We're sure that all those involved in our school trips can agree that they were something special. In 2019, many of us travelled to Belgium where, between our 6am bagpipe, bagpipe wake-up calls and nightly toast to the king, it's safe to say we had a lot of laughs. The trip was also a hugely valuable experience and it allowed us to gain a deeper understanding and appreciation for all the courageous sacrifices made during the war. Others got the chance to attend the French water sports trip. None of us were actually there, but we heard it was an amazing time for everyone, apart from maybe Mr Speedy who came back with a broken leg. Between that and the bus breaking down on the way back from Alton Towers, it's safe to say that some trips ran a lot more smoothly than others. These opportunities allowed us to create amazing, memorable memories that I'm sure we'll never forget. Most of which has appeared in our yearbook for sections about Best Teacher, which Mr Paris didn't win. There is no doubt that a lot has changed within the school. The school got slowly more purple, the doors got purple, the floor got purple, even the sound inside got purple. The courtyard got quieter and we lost our favourite foods in the canteen. Rest in peace to chicken witches and sousos. But long live my steak pie. Assemblies revolved around rugby analogies, mere cat pod, and podcasts Mr. Paz had us listen to, which clearly we all listen to. Departments have moved, and I'm sure English has never been more glad to get rid of drama, no offence to Mr. Hogg, and our day got shorter by a whole five minutes. <laughs> but some things never change. We all have the tradition of Ida coming at lunchtime singing us happy birthday, being all embarrassed. The endless excuses for PE keep on growing, the long queues of hungry pupils trying to sneak past and senior management, and Miss Roy chasing up all those teachers at registration, not naming any names, but Mr Mackay, Mr Dimwoody, and Mr Gibson. 
in the endless stress of school and by the way we've all noticed Mr. Parr's getting a wee bit more grey. Sorry. <laughs> We've had no easy journey, especially from fourth year onwards, with COVID causing a massive disruption. The online learning was a challenge, but the school and teachers made it the best out of a bad situation, providing all the support we needed, with many teachers are learning alongside us the easiest way to make the technology work. From Miss Miller's good morning people to Mr <laughs> Walton and Miss Wilkes' therapy sessions, even through the technical difficulties, we still managed to maintain a connection in our, with our teachers. A fair few of us went into panic when we were called into that assembly hall March of 2020 and told exams were cancelled. But teachers worked to reassure us everything would work out in the end. We've learned a lot from COVID, but truly have come out the other side stronger and better connected as individuals. We've had our laugh. It's been a hard six years, but it's fair to say we've finally made it. I'm sure we can speak for everyone that it's certainly been memorable. We want to further thank the staff, parents and carers for supporting us through the journey of these six years. And to our fellow S6 in front of us, thank you for making these last six years something special. We've had our laughs, our cries and our fights, but we've survived to the end and good luck to the class of 2022. Massive well done. Uh, I, I've just got a few things to say before we start issuing the, the, the certificates and yearbooks. Um, yeah, it's the, the end of an era uh, for the class of 2022. You have attended here, most of you, for the past six years. Have you dropped out a wee bit early? Anyway. Uh, and now the time's come for us all to, to say goodbye. Um, I, I think I can honestly say, and I've told you this before, um, it's been an honour and a privilege to be here for uh, the past two years. It has been a brilliant year group and yeah, it's been absolutely great. I'll, I'll miss you uh, terribly. Um, you have gone through a lot in your school uh, and I think that big C word, which everyone has fed up hearing about, but COVID is, is definitely one. You know, I think of school closures, remote learning, blended learning, Face to face, face masks, lunch in here for ages, which actually seemed to go down pretty well. Uh, there was a kind of campaign to retain the, the lunch in the assembly hall, uh, bubbles, you name it, you've been through it. Uh, so you all deserve a massive pat on the back for what you've come through these past six years. It's also been a privilege, mostly, uh, to teach some of you uh, through S1 and S6, and I'll touch upon that a wee bit later. I've been hugely impressed by many of your contributions over your six years at school. Um, you've left a lasting legacy, uh, as Mr. Parr has said, with regards to your first, sorry, their first year of school captains. Uh, but more generally, you've made a huge contribution uh, to this school. From a personal perspective, and this is a very personal perspective, I, I, as you know, I wasn't very well. Um, at the beginning of this term, and, and certainly the kind of cards and emails and messages that I got, uh, really appreciated. And I actually feel a bit emotional. Uh, next year, you're all going on to various different exciting things. The world of work, university, college, whatever it might be. I, I just want to wish you all the very best. Um, the one thing I do want you to keep being is a learner. Right? Um, Keep learning. Whatever it is you do, keep learning. Uh, it is a massive, massive thing. Please keep learning throughout your school career. I wish you all the very success for your future lives, but I need to pick on a few of you. It would be rude not to have a go at a few of you. I could probably say something about every single one of you, but I don't want to speak as long as Mr. Paris because you will, after over three or four years he's been here, you're fed up listening to him and his ridiculously long assemblies. So I'm not going to do it, so I can't speak about everybody. However, there are a few. Stephen Page, I, I, I'm really sorry, like it honestly has taken me to about February to work it out. And it is now, it's all the hair. It is, it's the hair and I, I, I'm sorry because the amount of mistakes I've probably made over the years was, was, was ridiculous. Aidan, I mean, what am I going to do without tech guy? You know, you are the fixer of everything for me. Um, so massive thanks, Aidan, for, for everything you've done over the years. It's Joe here. Where is Joe? It's Joe here. 
Joe, please get a better sports son than F1. It is the most boring thing <laughs> in the world. Come on. Callum. Callum Black. All I'm going to say here, son, is that European Cup finals aren't for everyone. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, in all seriousness, Callum, I will miss our football banter. Um, but remember, that number that will always be so important to both of us, 55. <laughs> Annabella Brown. If I, I, I'm actually, I'm really going to miss her just moaning at me constantly. I've been looking for you for ages, where have you been? I'm a busy man, Annabelle, I tell you this all the time. So I will miss you moaning at me and chasing me around the building. Uh, who's these far legs? Here he is. <laughs> Logan Curry. Logan Curry, he has the best legs in Armadale. So the school, the school is now at a loss because we're losing spar legs. It's a real, real shame. Uh, you'll take it with me. Uh, people like Fiona, Hannah, Emma, Sarah, Emily, Rachel. No matter what you went through, you always just smile. And I love that. They're some of the smiliest people I think I've ever met in my life. And just keep smiling. There is the big that I don't actually have to see right now. And others keep smiling uh, because it makes a massive, massive difference. Uh, Leah, Mark, Cody, Christina, Abby, all you lot. What am I going to do? Well, where am I going to get my sweeties? I actually don't know where I'm going to get my sweeties over the next, next year. Hira and Lara, you deserve some special mention. As I hope you feel really bad. I hope you feel really bad, and all I'm going to say here is that I feel as if they had a, a role in a certain royal death. That's all I'm going to say. They made a very bold prediction in higher history, and about the next week it happened. So, here in Lara, the, the, the sort of resident witches of our <laughs> for, for predicting the future. Um, Super League. There he is. Let's hope our team do the title next year, so they keep wearing those Union Jack underpants. Good man. <laughs> Alistair Purvis, Charlotte Rickes, please, 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 just get a new bit of tea with me. Come on, are you serious? It's embarrassing. Did Elena make it in? Where did she, did she make it in? Was she late? There she is. I hear you're in a huff, Mrs. that you didn't want to play rounders a day. Now, all I'm saying is, some things will never change with that girl. She's in a huff. Some things don't change. Sky, where's Sky? Me, the boss man, will be looking for some good tickets when you're going to play for Scotland or foreign trip would be really good, sir. <laughs> right up for that, you can get us a wee foreign trip, maybe New Zealand, actually. <laughs> I'd like to go. I'd like to go. Uh, Brandon, all I'm saying is that I won that water bottle challenge fair and square. Alright, so fair and square, sir. Fair and square. Scully, remember, you and I have got a deal. 100% in that higher history exam or your forest. Right? We've got a deal. We've got a deal. Um, girls, more generally. All I'm saying is that who knew the sun always shone in Armadale, Blackbridge and Bathgate on a Thursday night? Thursday night must have been glorious. I mean, who needs my beer when you play Blackbridge? Because on a Friday morning, they walk in, here they go, all panned up. Unbelievable. Incredible. Just please get the hands a bit better from the side of the Pretty disgusting, actually. <laughs> Higher history class of 2021. Um, I, I love that class the bits. So it'll go down as one of my favourites. You put up uh, well, a lot of my dreadful chat and probably a lot of Mr. Moody's dreadful chat as well, to be honest with you. Thanks for all your patience during my Teams calls. Uh, that was a big uh, learning lesson for me. So massive thanks to that. Uh, and finally, the school captains, they're now no longer in the back row, they're interspersed. Um, but thanks for all your efforts. Um, even though I was a bit late or missed quite a lot of meetings, not going to lie, sorry Mrs Nicholson, uh, you've made a massive contribution and a huge thanks for that. So, uh, I am sure I speak on behalf of all the staff that are along that wall there uh, and expressing, expressing the pleasure uh, that I have had and we have had in, in, in knowing you uh, as well as teaching you. you. You're a cracking group of, of, of young people. Um, please keep in touch with your adventures uh, and I echo Mr Paris's words. Just do it. You know, as Mike said, just do it. If you get an opportunity, just do it. Um, so I wish you all the very best wishes. You will be missed in the future. Cheers, guys. Right, uh, we're now going to do this.
the last big job, don't screw it up. We're going to do this row by row and we're going to start with B. Alright, so you you know the script and, and we'll do the uh, certificates in your books. Alright, I think Duncan's going to do some changes as well. Cheers, Duncan. Uh, uh, Right, start. Feel free to get any pictures, starts, whatever you want to do. Guys, go as well. I'll go. I'll come up as a row. Annabella, just hold. Eve Adamson. Kyle Armstrong. Ted Guy, come on Aiden. Come on down. Come on back in the third. Go. Peace. Better force. Peace. I'm
Right guys, that, that kind of brings to an end the, the, the formal part of today, but uh, just before we wrap up, a few wee thank yous. Firstly, many thanks to Parents and Carers for, for coming along today, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, another massive thank you to all the office ladies who helped in doing all the admin and setting all this up and today, so a massive thanks to the office team. Uh, another <laughs> Definitely. I'll be in that boozer later, Holly, don't you worry. A uh, massive thanks to Jen, whoever she is, Mrs. Nicholson. Huge thanks for all your help, Jen Duncan. Thank you for your playing um, this morning as well. And just a massive thanks to the wider staff for, for popping down to, to the graduation ceremony. So the plans as, are as follows. A6s uh, are going to stay in here because I'd like this to get a little photograph. And um, just on the bleachers. All right, get that organised. <coughs> Mr. the dad over to help me with that, would be good. Uh, parents and carers, I, I don't know if you guys want some pictures, but if you just want to make you hang about just for 10 minutes or so, you can get some pictures. You guys have then got between half 11 till the, about half 12 to get your yearbook signed, shirt signed, get changed for what will be a very competitive game of rounders. But I warn you now, just watch when that man over there is feeling. Just watch. What incident? What incident? You're still holding it against you. I'm still holding it against you. I'm still with the bruises to show for it after last year. Um, <laughs> and then at half past one, the barbecue will start serving, and then we're going to have to onwards. You're free to go and do whatever you guys do on a Friday night, but don't. Tell me because I was still up on the fill out, so then he tell me nothing. Alright? So massive well done and, and huge thanks again for the